lot of words in mathematics are just regular English words. You know, I'll take uh, pizza and divide it into thirds. I'll eat the remainder. I'll take the difference of two things. I'll, I'll associate with my friends. I'll commute to work. You know, my identity. Mathematics mostly takes these words and then imbues them with some, with some richer meaning. Contrast that situation with the word modulo. Modulo is a word that English didn't have but needed. Mathematics provided it to us. But what does the word modulo actually mean? Well, if you've done some, some computer programming, uh, you've maybe seen the word, the word modulo uh, in the context of the remainder operation. So here's, here's what I mean by, by thinking of it as a remainder operation. So, uh, you know, you might do a calculation like 17 mod 7. And here, uh, you know, I'm thinking of mod as if it were an operation on uh, numbers the same way that I might multiply or divide two numbers. Now, if I took 17 and divided it by 7, I'd get 2 with a remainder of 3. And that's what this mod operation then is, is asking me to think about. It's asking me to think about the remainder when I take the first number and divide it by the second. So uh, 17 mod 7, you might say, is equal to 3 if you're thinking of modulo as being this, this kind of remainder operation. Maybe to make it a little bit more exciting, you know, you can do the same kind of calculation uh, just with bigger numbers, right? So if I took a number like 1,000 and I divide it by uh, 17, uh, 17 goes into 1,058 times with a remainder of uh, 14. Uh, so consequently, you know, uh, you, might, you might write down, if you're doing some programming, you might say 1,000 uh, mod 17 is equal to 14, just to record the fact that when I took 1,000 and I divided it by 17, I got a remainder of, of 14, all right? 17 goes into 1,000 58 times with, with this remainder. Now, this is often what people mean or maybe the experience that people have had with mod, but this is emphatically not what I mean here, right? I don't want you to think of modulo as just being an operation between two, between two numbers. So what do I mean? As a procedure, modulo 5 really does just mean to divide by 5 and then find the remainder. But I don't want you to think about it as a procedure. I want you to think about it differently. Think of working modulo 5 as working in some kind of context where the number 5 is really regarded as being 0. Okay, so let's work modulo 5, right? That means we're going to regard 5 as if it's equal to 0. And if we're doing some calculations modulo 5, then uh, I could get away with writing down, say, 7 equals 2, which uh, I mean, it seems like nonsense. But we're working modulo 5. What does that mean? Well, 7 always means 5 plus 2. That's what 7 means. But if 5 is equal to 0, then 5 plus 2 is the same thing as 0 plus 2, which is just 2. So 7 is the same thing as 2 modulo 5 once I regard 5 as being the same thing as 0. Or here's another example, right? Uh, let's think about 13. Uh, 13, well, that's uh, 2 times 5 uh, plus 3. But now if 5 is equal to 0 because we're working modulo 5, then 2 times 5 is the same thing as 2 times 0 plus 3. But 2 times 0, that's 0 plus 3, that's 3. So 13 is the same thing as 3 modulo 5. And, you know, certainly there's some connection between this and thinking about remainders from before. Because if I took 7 and I divide it by 5 and I ask what's the remainder, it's 2. And if I took 13 and I divide it by 5 and I ask what's the remainder, the remainder is 3. Maybe this seems like a distinction without a difference. But there is a difference. Well, the difference is, is that if I'm working modulo 5, I not only can say things like 7 is equivalent to 2 or 13 is equivalent to 3 modulo 5, I can also say things like 13 is equivalent to 28 modulo 5. I mean, after all, 13 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 is equal to 28. But you know, it's the same thing. Modulo 5 is 13 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. So 13 is the same in some sense as 28 modulo 5 if I'm regarding 5 as if it were 0. Now, what does this mean about the meaning of, of modulo? Well, you know, when we're thinking about, about modulo, your, your past experience about modulo might have led you to think that it's, it's really a remainder operation, right? But that's, that's not what I mean, right? I really want you to think of modulo as being this new kind of equivalence. Now, in the case of uh, when we're working um, modulo 5, 
right, and we're thinking about this, it, it is the case that uh, when I take seven and I divide it by five and I ask what's the remainder, it's two. And when I take 13 and I divide it by five and I ask what's the remainder, it's, it is three. But with an example like uh, 13 being equivalent to 28 modulo five, I mean, it's definitely not the case that when I take 13 and I divide it by five, the remainder is, is not 28. And yet, I want to regard 13 and 28 as if they were the same once I throw away the fives. This idea that, that two things can be the same after ignoring some piece of them, I mean, that, that comes up all the time in daily life. I often want to be able to compare two objects up to modulo some other component. You know, you might say something like, uh, these two restaurants are equally as good modulo their prices, or a grape is a raisin modulo water, or uh, a latte is an espresso modulo milk. So to be more careful about this, I want some notation so we can talk about this, this precisely. So we're gonna write this. We're gonna write that A is congruent to B modulo M to mean that A is the same thing as B when we regard M as if it were zero. Right? This is when we're working modulo m. I want to keep track of what it is that we're working modulo uh, when we write down these uh, equivalences. Now, contrast this with just regular old equality. Right? If I say that a is equal to b, I mean, that's really the same thing as saying that the difference of a and b vanishes. Now, I can try to think about this over here as, as well. I mean, if I want to think about a as being equivalent to b when I'm regarding m as being zero, well, that should be the same thing as saying that the difference of a and b is zero modulo m. But what does it mean to be zero modulo m? I mean, to be equal to zero modulo m, that's as good as being a, a multiple of, of m. Because m is being regarded as if it's zero, any multiple of m is also zero. So to ask uh, whether or not a minus b is congruent to zero modulo m is the same thing as asking whether or not a minus b is a multiple of m. Uh, if you want a little bit more uh, notation, instead of writing down this whole statement is a multiple of, I could instead write that m divides a minus b. So that's what we mean by, by modulo in this context of, of congruence. Right? We're defining precisely uh, a is congruent to b modulo m. And often we will use that equivalence relation. We'll explicitly write that down for, for some integers, a, b, and m. But at other times, we'll do a, a, our work or some, some computation in the context of a ring like z mod 5. Now, in this case, we'd say that we're working in z mod 5. Now, this is some older notation. I think if you were looking at, at newer sources, you'd see z slash 5z to mean z mod 5. Uh, but we'll use this, this older notation. What I really mean by that is that uh, z mod 5 is, uh, you know, it's, it's like the integers, but I'm identifying integers that are congruent modulo 5. So I'm actually I'm regarding those integers as being the same in some sense in, in z mod 5. So I mean, I might think of uh, the number 4 as being a name for an element of z mod 5. I might think of the number 2 as being the name of an element of z mod 5. And then I have a computation like 4 times 2 is 3 if I'm doing that computation inside z mod 5, where I'm, I'm regarding uh, 4 times 2, yeah, I mean, secretly, I know that's really 8, but 8 is the same thing as 3 if I'm identifying integers that are congruent modulo 5. What's delicate here is that the elements of z mod 5 are not themselves integers. The elements of z mod 5 are named by integers. So z mod 5 consists of five elements, and those elements have the names 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, z mod 5 is supposed to be just like the integers, but I'm identifying integers that are congruent modulo 5. So integers that might have been different as integers are now the same in, in z mod 5. And we saw that here, right? I mean, 4 times 2 is, is really 8, but I'm regarding 8 as being the same thing as 3, or maybe another name for 3 in z mod 5. But once you write down something like this, you're potentially tempted to think of z mod 5 as being a subset of the integers. After all, the symbols 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 are also symbols that we would use for the integers. So does this mean that z mod 5 is a subset of the integers? Well, I want to emphatically say no. I don't want you to regard z mod 5 as being a subset of, of the integers. I mean, after all, I could have regarded z mod 5 not as being labeled by 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, but instead as being 
labeled by 5, 16, negative 3, 28, and 44. I mean, it is also the case that every integer is congruent to one of these five integers, modulo 5. So, okay, I mean, if you tell me that Z mod 5 is a subset of the integers, I'm going to push back on you and say, well, what five integers are you thinking of as being Z mod 5 inside Z? I mean, why is this collection any less good than choosing this admittedly more natural looking, looking collection? Indeed, rather than thinking of Z mod 5 as being a subset of the integers, I'd prefer that you think about a function from the integers to Z mod 5. I'd prefer that you think of Z mod 5 as as being exactly like the integers, but where integers that were different are now the same. Right? It's a gluing together as opposed to some sort of a subset. There's some real tension here. I mean, sometimes when we say modulo, we might mean an operation between integers. We might mean just find the remainder. At other times, we'll use modulo in the context of, of an equivalence relation, where we're giving a new kind of equality, say, between two integers. We'll say that A is congruent to B modulo M. And at other times, we're using modulo in the, in the context of an algebraic object, like, like a ring. And the purpose of, of this video, and the purpose really of all these videos, is, is to heighten and, and showcase some of those tensions. That the, the same word, the same idea is appearing in multiple different places. And I want you to you know, reflect on that, think about what that means. You know, how far can you push this idea of, of modulo? I mean, if you can work modulo 5, can you work modulo the square root of 2? Can you work modulo pi? Can you work modulo 1? What would that even mean? You know, can you come up with even, even some crazier ideas?